Hey there YouTube, Michael from uh, Zenotech Tutorials here. I'm going to be doing a video series on Office 365 for Business. Um, I'm going to start with some basic o overviews of it and start to go more in depth into each of the services, what they are, what they do, things like that. Uh, this is Office 365 for Business, not to be confused with the home version that you would generally buy at Best Buy or Walmart or things that come on a uh, a, a new computer now. Uh, this is something that you have to go out and you buy this online. This is something that you knowingly buy. Nothing that's pre-installed on the computer, nothing like that. This is the business software. Um, this series is going to be geared towards people that are either running their own businesses already or are looking to start and are looking at different um, online cloud services, different solutions to help them do that. Uh, I may be covering other services in the future, such as um, Google Apps, Amazon Web Services, but right now I'll be starting with Office 365 for business as that's the one that I'm, I am the most familiar with. So to start, I'm going to touch on basically what Office 365 is, some of the plan structures, things like that. Office 365, as I said, is a cloud service. Um, and not just that, but it comes with applications too for the computer. Um, it comes with the Office Professional Plus applications, uh, you know, the, the, the regular uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, Outlook, OneNote, uh, Publisher, Access, and Skype for Business of what used to be called Link. Um, but more than just the Office Pro Plus suite, it comes with a lot of things. Um, it comes with um, email for Exchange Online. Uh, it comes with SharePoint, which is, which is more of a um, a uh, collaboration tool. It comes with things like Yammer, Sway, Video. There's a whole bunch of things in there, um, but I'm not going to go too much into that on this video. What I want to start on is basically some of the Office 365 plans. So when we take a look at the plans, we see a bunch of plans, um, business essentials, and business premium business essentials and these two plans here as you can see are only for use of a max of 300 users so if you're running a small business this may be something that you want to look at um, depending on what you need business essentials does not come with the office professional plus downloaded applications it just comes with the online tools uh, it comes with um, Exchange Online email that you can still get to through the web app and you can configure on an Outlook client if you have one from a different source. Um, it comes with that, comes with SharePoint, comes with Yammer. Um, it basically comes with all of the applications and all of the services that you can access just by going to the web interface. Uh, there are, within the SharePoint license, there is um, certain things, they're called the, the Office web apps. They're basically streamlined versions of um, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote, um, but they're just on the portal, they're not on the computer. Business Premium has the same thing that Business, business Essentials has, but it also has the downloaded applications um, that you can install on your computer. Any of these plans that I mentioned will come with the Office 2016, uh, whether you're on a Windows machine or a Mac. Um, I believe minimum requirements to run them are Windows 7 Service Pack 1 for uh, uh, Windows clients, um, and for Mac, I believe it needs to be at least 10.9 to run Office 2016. Um, when you start to look at the Enterprise 1, Enterprise 3, 4, and 5 plans, um, we start to look at more of the um, advanced email solutions. We get more of the web apps. Um, when you're looking at, you know, if you have business compliance reasons or security requirements that you need to retain all emails, you need to have legal hold. Uh, you need to have archiving for your users' um, individual archiving. Those things would start to come with the E3 license. Um, not just the E3 license, but there also are separate licenses that you can buy. The E3 breaks down into many things. It has Exchange, it has SharePoint, it has Skype for Business, but there's different ways where you can buy each of those licenses separately as well. And so, for instance, if you needed legal hold for your users, you can get the Enterprise 3 license, or you can just get what's called Exchange Online Plan 2, which is built into the E3. 
um, things like that. But you know, if you want them to have the legal hold and Office Pro Plus and other things, then you would need to get them the E3. The E4, right now, it still exists. I can't remember the exact time, but I know later on this year, the E4 is going away entirely in favor of the E5. The E4 came with what was called Enterprise Voice, where if you have it on premise and you already know what it is, but for those who don't, basically you could port phone numbers over from a different provider um, and you could use Skype for Business basically as your regular phone system. It, it has all the features plus some of what you would think of a normal PBX phone system. Um, call forwarding, call waiting, conference calls, things like that. And you get external phone numbers that someone can just call from their cell phone. It, the other person doesn't have to have Skype for Business to use it. The E5 plan um, is almost the same thing, except in the E5, Microsoft themselves becomes the PTS, the, the, the PTSN provider, and they actually give you the phone numbers for that. Um, now, for those that are maybe you're already on E4 and you know, or, the, or maybe this is the first time that you're hearing that E4 is going away in favor of the E5, um, there are a few options that you guys have as far as upgrading. Um, this is basically what Microsoft gives you here, and I'm going to put this link in the description so you can take a look at it. Um, but these are basically your options if you're currently on an E4 and you continue or intend to use Enterprise Voice. Um, you know, if you don't need an Enterprise Voice, then you can just go down to the E3 or whatever it may be. So when we take a look at some of these licenses, like I said, the, the only one here that's different vastly from the other ones is the Enterprise K1, which is kiosk licenses. When we take a look at the kiosk licenses, the Exchange Line kiosk, just at itself, really cheap price, $2 a user a month. Um, you get the email, but all the all the other exchange plans come with a 50 gig email box. This comes with two. This is meant to be for a deskless user, somebody that's not really at one workstation that much, someone that's always on the move, um, to where they can just go to any machine, they can access the Outlook web app and they can sign in. You can configure it on Outlook, but it'll only take a pop connection. It won't take the uh, Exchange Mappy connection. Um, Obviously, all the plans that have email running through Office 365 have Exchange Online Protection, which is the malware protection, anti-spam filtering. Um, Exchange Active Sync is basically configuring it on your on, on your smartphone. Um, and like I said, it only has POP for the email clients. It does not have anything else. When you're looking at Enterprise K1, um, you get Yammer, which is more of a social network, um, f but just for your organization. You can't... In just random users can't get into it, like say Facebook, you have to actually invite them. Um, SharePoint Online and Office Online, which is what I was saying before, those web apps, the Word, the Excel, the PowerPoint, and the OneNote. Um, that's the difference between those. Pretty cheap prices, not really meant to be for anybody that's always going to be at a desk. Um, when we look at the government and the education licenses, there's no sense in me going over those. The the education and the government licenses have the exact same breakdown and same services and everything as real enterprise licenses. The only difference is a lot of times the pricing is different for education and for government. And also it's not listed on here, but there's plan for nonprofit as well. Um, but basically the pricing differs and for the other things, education, you know, you have to submit certain documentation to Microsoft to prove that you're a school or to prove that you're the gov a, a, a government entity or to prove that you're a nonprofit organization um, to actually qualify for that pricing. You can do a free trial of these at any point you want to, um, but the free trial only lasts for 30 days. At that point, it becomes useless. So, and I'm not going to go over when again all of this here. This is taking me way too long to go over, but I'm going to put this in the description as well. This is basically. Um, what's available with each service. Um, obviously the yes is in the no's, and then you see here how we have the numbers. There's different footnotes at the bottom that explain what those numbers mean. Um, but those are basically the Office 365 plans. Um, and I do just want to briefly touch on, like I said, the, the E5 plan. Um, this is the most expensive one right now. It's because, like I said, Microsoft becomes the, P the PTSM provider at that point. Um, 
But this is what's in the Office 365 plan. Like I said, the the downloaded apps, which go back, um, the Enterprise 3 also has the Office the Office Pro Plus downloads, um, online meetings, meeting broadcasts, PSTN conferencing. Um, like I said, uh, Modern Voice with Cloud PBX, we at that point, not sorry, not we, but Microsoft becomes the PTSN provider. Um, there's interoperability between Skype and Skype for Business. Uh, by Skype, I mean the Skype personal um, that you know we commonly have on our computers just to talk to friends and family, things like that. Email calendars, uh, advanced email, that falls under the archive email litigation hold that I mentioned before. Document and access control. Um, that's something called Azure Rights Management, which I'll touch on in a different video. Um, and there's some other things here, but that's that's really the gist of the E5. Um, it's really just ex as expensive as it is because Microsoft is providing the phone numbers at that point. Um, but I'm not really going to go too much more in this video. Like I said, Office 365 is meant to be a cloud service that you can use to help grow your business, to help get, um, you know, get get a presence online basically um like i said the main competitors are you know google apps amazon web services um they all have the same general functions but as you know each service is going to have its own things that's that that help it stand out from the rest uh, but that's really about it for this video um as i go and i make more videos i'm going to start to go into how to create an office 365 tenant um how to set yourself up on it and then i'll start to go into videos as to what each of the different services are and i'll really go in depth on them um that's about it for this video uh thank you guys for watching once again uh, my name is michael and this channel is Enotech tutorials uh if you like subscribe share it with your friends share it with your colleagues uh, i'll be putting this up on linkedin as well um but yes until next time